Complete deformation. Sorry, I don't understand <laughs> what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry about the echo. <laughs> yeah, we're still getting used to this concept of live stream. Yeah. And hopefully, it will get more polished in the future. It's a second live stream for us. <laughs> sorry. So if we can just get a confirmation that the sound is all right now, we can continue. So let's wait. Uh, wait for the confirmation from, from chat. I always wanted to say that. <laughs> <laughs> in the meantime, I can repeat like we we really enjoyed uh, creating this scene because of the uh, botanic animations and the aquatic animation that work well together, and uh, it makes uh, the entire scene more live than if, if it would be just a static render. And uh, yeah, the the vertical fountains that are there, uh, they gave me a lot of headache. They were like the hardest to get right. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the result at the end, but I'm really looking forward to getting more feedback from from the users uh, to see like what what else would they would like to see, or you would like to see, what would they would like to be improved, how how to continue with aquatic in general because. Yes, this is the first release. We have got a lot of plans, a lot of ideas to do, but yeah, we want to listen to the community. We just don't want to uh, guide it by ourselves. We want to be guided by the community. Yeah, yeah. So if you have any feedback regarding Aquatic or what's missing, you know, what you, what you would like to see in it, just let us know on Discord and we will consider it. And, you know, who knows, maybe actually include it. It's really important to us for us as Johan said. I uh, just switched to the next animation. This one was to uh, showcase just the aquatic and uh, one of the very important features, at least for me, because I come from a game development uh, background, and that was the optimization and efficiency. So uh, this scene actually only has 30 frames and it loops infinitely. So this was like really quick to render, and the effect is quite nice. As you can see, you can have it on the loop infinitely, and it looks fine. So, yeah, hopefully uh, people will uh, enjoy this as well. Right. Uh, we actually didn't have our webcam on, so you, will, you can see us now <laughs> as well. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hopefully the mic is not in the, in the view. Yeah. yeah, here I'm uh, playing a video of some aquatic assets that we've made. Uh, because we wanted to like uh, not just deliver the effect, but something to show uh, how the effects actually work and what they can be used for, and also save time. We, uh, as with all add-ons, we try to uh, create them in a way that saves time, especially especially to uh, especially to architects and uh, you know 3D models who uh, specializes in uh, Blender uh, architecture. But of course, it's not like a limitation. This can be used for everything. As I said, there are a lot of uh, game develop, uh, yeah, game de development uh, aspects to this. So it's more optimized than some of the architectural assets, I would say. <laughs> so Ben uh, says, please get the OAs. How do you read that <laughs> catalog? And give us some more of your wonderful. You may or may, or may not know. You may or may, or may not know. Uh, these uh, are actually. Like two add-ons, because we we wanted to improve uh, material, uh, but it was uh, marketed as a material library, and we wanted aquatic to be more than that. Just like botanic is a intended to be a solution for natural assets, we wanted aquatic to be a solution for water-related assets, and it, it didn't make sense to build a library and then stack on top of it. So we wanted to create a different add-on, but it wouldn't make sense to um, maintain two add-ons at the same time, so we decided to merge them actually in Aquatic. And uh, if you are Aquatic user, you may know that you got this uh, Aquatic add-on with very, very big uh, sales, almost for free. Yeah, well, that's a fun story. I wanted to give you guys one hundred percent off, but uh, we can actually do that. So the coupon wasn't working uh, because of uh, of my mistake. So I gave you 100% discount and it needed to be at least 98 uh, to cover the fees on blend market. So that's why uh, you had some troubles uh, with upgrading. Uh, and we actually have the first uh, question. 
you know, not concerning technical issues, which we are again sorry for. Uh, and then it's, I have a question. Is it possible to edit, modify one of the water effects to conform to a custom object? So that's the remapping, right? Right. Uh, well, uh, I think that's very uh, doable with Apotech, definitely. Uh, I think I would approach this, uh, what you can do two ways, either using mapping, as Matej said, but I think the easiest solution is a shrink wrap modifier in Blender. I'm not sure if we have the stream set to Blender. Yeah, it is. Can right. I just confirm on, on OBS? Just go. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So, as you said, uh, like if you wanted some uh, water slide or something. Oh, too many uh, zeros. So, I will create a little water slide right here. But I don't want to spend too much time on this. Like, let's say it's something like this. Yeah. I guess that could pass for. Uh, a water slide. Yeah. And uh, if I wanted to, to have the effect, the aquatic effect, to follow this um, this mesh, I would spawn the effect like the stream. Could you maybe uh, make the interface bigger? Oh uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, that's, that's better. All right. So we got this effect, and uh, of course, to do some, any modifications on it, you would have to convert it to editable first because it's a linked instance. You know, it's just an empty with the object for the optimization purposes. So I would convert it to editable, and uh, I would it uh, lay it on top of the object I want to, and. Uh, yeah, it would need some subdivision for this, like more mesh. You know, the vertices are <laughs> so big. Yeah. And uh, yeah, then if I would add a shrink wrap modifier, which is here, and set this object as a target, with some offset, it would snap to it. Uh, Yeah, it would snap to it, so it would follow the uh, the object. Of course, yeah. <laughs> some of the settings are not great for this. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I think the project one should work the best, but it's not working for some reason, and I cannot for life of me. Oh, yeah, there we go. So if you take a screenshot of the settings because I never remember it uh, in the right time. And now I would just delete the parts of the effect that I would need. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I actually don't know if you can do this. <laughs> yeah, just delete this. And yeah, now it's following the object. And it's it's still like procedural. Like if you would change the object underneath, it would still. <laughs> now it's running upside down. Not sure if you if you can see. Uh, which you could rotate the object, or you could rotate the UVs to get the correct uh, direction. Yeah. Let's go down. Let's put a black um, material underneath, so it. Uh, more visible. Cool. Cool demonstration. Are there any more questions from you guys? Johannes, ready to answer all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so there's actually no, no remapping needed. That's, that's pretty cool. I thought you need to, needed to remap the effect. Yeah, I mean, you could. In some cases, it's the better solution. In some cases, this one. It, it's really like situation based. Mm -hmm. I would probably use this one because uh, you've got the uh, flexibility of the of the modifier. So if I uh, you know change the shape here, it uh, actually follows the shape as well. So it's much easier to 
like uh, change the parameters. That's cool, that's very cool. Right, so, yeah, let's maybe play some more animations in the meanwhile, so I will like that. Yeah, so these are all uh, the assets, the fountain assets that are in Aquatic, uh, the initial release. Uh, we have showed this off before. Some of them are bigger, some of them are smaller. Uh, we are interested uh, like what you guys are going to do with them. Uh, we have already seen some pretty uh, creative uh, ways of using these assets. Uh, someone uh, used them as a effect in a skull. Uh, we have actually posted that on our Instagram. So it's uh, water coming uh, out of the uh, eyes of the skull. Yeah, I loved, I loved it very very much. It was an awesome idea and if you are watching, uh, thank you. It made me really happy to see this effect used in such a way because yeah, we watched a lot of fountains but we didn't get to get as creative <laughs> as you did. So it's awesome and um, I'm really looking forward to seeing more effects like this. Hey, can, can we actually show it here? Do, do we have it somewhere? We don't have it in the folder. Uh, we can just open up Instagram uh, in the browser and we can show it off. Or we can we can do it like that. I think it was here. Mm, not sure. Yeah, yeah, it's there. Awesome. Yeah, you, you're not seeing I'm on the other monitor. I'm trying to download the image. So if yeah. we can switch to desktop, it's there. It's there. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So this is like super awesome. I I love this uh, image so much. And it, you, you can see all the effects because like there is this, uh, I think that's uh, directional, yeah, the directional stream. <laughs> In the back there's downward stream. Here are the mist up splashes. Here are the circular splashes. It's all there. <laughs> this is like this is what Aquatic was uh, made for. <laughs> yeah, very creative. Uh, the artist's name is Vlad. Uh, 3D design on Instagram if you want to give him a follow, he's quite talented. Right, uh, let's move on to the next animation. Sure then. Okay, this one. This one's made by me actually. <laughs> you can spot a mistake in the animation, gets five bucks. <laughs> Including you. <laughs> I already <don't know. laughs> uh, Keep in mind guys, you can ask questions in the chat, so if, if you have any, just ask. Uh, we can answer anything. It doesn't have to be connected to Aquatic, it can be connected to Botanic or just Blender in general. Uh, or Polygonic, maybe. Or me, or you on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, back, uh, back to the scene. Yeah. If, if you notice uh, the, uh, the bridge in the background is actually flying. Uh, I noticed it after the rendering and I didn't feel like rendering. So, <laughs> yeah, mistakes like this happens, I'm sure all of you have. Uh, <laughs> experienced this before but overall I was happy with the effect I, as I said I wanted to show something different than just the fountains so uh, I had this like, feeling that a lot of people would want Aquatic to, uh, to, be, to be able to create waterfalls with it it's like one of the coolest features one of the coolest uh, uh, ways water can behave <laughs> So yeah, I did this one, and again, you may remember, uh, you may recognize some of some parts of the scene because this is also a park scene from Botanic 5.4 showcase. So yeah, we we are like making all all the old scenes we had uh, alive again. Yeah, so we basically reuse a lot. Uh, that's I guess that's how everybody does it, right? Why would you model everything again when you already have it? <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> just reuse it. <laughs> and Time is precious. Yeah. <laughs> I actually love this scene. I think it's my favorite from all of the scenes we made. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this, this one really made me laugh. It was like what I was talking about. About having something out of the box, not just the fountains. Uh, this one was made by uh, our teammate Carol, and we were like wondering if it's too much to show, but then uh, <laughs> we decided now this is the right amount of funny we want to show. Uh, I've actually uh, ended my uh, YouTube release video with this image because it's so much fun. And again, like 
say something about aquatic or show something here. Uh, the effects, they, uh, they are mostly uh, tileable, which means you can repeat them infinitely, which came in really handy here. Because uh, the stream is quite long, the texture itself, the animation sequence that uh, is the core of Botanic is not as long. But you can repeat it like five or six different times and it will, it will just, just follow the path, it will repeat without you ever noticing. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And it actually shows, shows again that Aquatic is not just mountains and waterfalls and lakes. It's stuff like this, you can make this in a couple of minutes, right? Yep. Just take a picture and add uh, the effect to it. So the next question from Ross is uh, how to make the shoreline follow a curve? Yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> when we started with the stream I, I was saying uh, I hope there won't be too many uh, what your questions because Votuil is uh, actually quite old, it's one of our oldest add-ons and one of the oldest that didn't have update for quite some time and we actually considered it to be a legacy uh, which uh, means that uh, we want to rework it we want to get back to it and rework everything because there are some things that are hard to understand, uh, hard to explain and hard to use but uh, I guess the easiest solution for you would be uh, just copy it from the scene that's provided. Uh, if uh, we can switch to Blender again, I'm not sure, yeah, yeah. because uh, we can see it uh, with a delay here. You can see it right there. All right. Yeah. So in the aquatic, you can see there's the open scene button. And this is the aquatic scene. And this one already contains a shoreline uh, that's parented to curve. So I guess your fastest opinion is just copy it from this uh, aquatic scene and use it uh, as you need. Yeah, the same actually goes for the empty boat wake. Uh, there are sort of question, questions concerning the boat wake effect and I think we should uh, also show that off. Even there is not a question for it. I know for a fact that a lot of our users uh, have troubles with it, so we can show that later. Well, yeah, here, here's the shoreline effect and you can see it's already parented to the curve. We just compile shaders before we see anything. But, um, yeah, basically this is the like shoreline material and this is a curve that actually is... Uh, uh, it, has, it has got some mesh generated from the curve. Yeah, it, it is uh, tapered. Yeah, we still have this uh, old effect here, I'm not sure for what reason. Yeah. So, yeah, it, if you just copy this to your scene, you can uh, edit uh, the shoreline effect as, as you need. And that's the easiest way to go about this. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, Johan, for explaining this. I also wanted to say uh, uh, very shortly about the empty boat wave. Uh, so the same actually applies to it. The easiest way to edit your scene is to just go to the uh, showcase scene, copy it to your scene, and then make sure that in the shader, edi shader editor, if you can show it, uh, you actually enable it. Uh, I myself didn't know, <laughs> didn't know this for uh, so, uh, quite some time, but uh, if you select the ocean material, the uh, actual ocean, not the shoreline. Oh, you want to talk, uh, show the yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So that's this the huge uh, crazy uh, note and mm -hmm. both way needs to be enabled by uh, switching this to one. Yeah, you first need to make the material editable here and then yeah, turn this on to one to make yeah. the both way curve. And I just copy this huge empty to your scene and you can animate that, uh, you know, keyframe it and it's, it's gonna move like, yeah. like, you, like you need to. Okay, uh, so Ross, uh, thanks, thanks, uh, thanks you for the answer, and we can move to the next one. If you have anything like a uh, follow-up question, Ross, just ask please. Uh, uh, George says, hi, all water be procedural texture. So is the texture procedural? Uh, I'm not sure which uh, water uh, is the question about because uh, there is the aquatic water and the uh, water water. And uh, the, they both are, 
I would call semi-procedural uh, because they use bitmap textures, so they are not generated on the fly, but there are some procedural elements to them uh, that uh, help uh, with the with the tiling, for example, with the texture bombing and such. Aquatic uh, is not really procedural, I would say. Uh, the the effects uh, there are some there were some decisions made, uh, and instead of generating this procedurally, we decided to do this uh, with the sequences, the bitmaps. And one of the biggest reason is because there is nothing to calculate, and you have the effect ready uh, just instantaneously. Yeah. Yeah, so you can see this is a bitmap, it's 30 frames that uh, repeat uh, again again. I would have to turn this on here so it uh, repeats, but it does in the, in the 3D report. Uh, but there are some limitations to it. I've noticed there is a question to reduce the water movement velocity. Uh, and yes, uh, we expected this question as well. <laughs> and uh, the question is yes and no. <laughs> it is possible. But it's not uh, like the way it was intended. Because as you see uh, in the texture, there, there's like a fit or set amount of, uh, of images. I'm not sure why this is not repeating. It should repeat. No, doesn't matter. Uh, so the animation has some speed that is set, the, the 30 frames and each frame the pixel moves by a cert certain position in the, in the image. But uh, you can somewhat change the speed by scaling the objects. Like, notice what happens when I play the animation now. And if I scale the effect, it slows down significantly. It, there, there are some artifacts like you actually stretch down the pixels, but uh, it's not as visible, I, I would say, as uh, it could be. So if you want to speed it up, you just scale it up like three times and you get much faster movement. Uh, again, there are some limitations. This was not like the intention, but that's how, how it works. So there are there is a certain limit which by you can speed up and slow down the animation. Awesome, that's a good answer. So there's just a, there's a hack to speed it up and uh, speed it down. Uh, the next question is, uh, have you already thought about the next release? What can we expect? So as we said uh, in the beginning of the stream, we are not decided just yet. We, we know what to add, we, want, uh, we know what we want to add in the future, but not exactly in the next release. Uh, we will decide on, based on the feedback that you, that you provide. So if you have any feedback, uh, any requests, just uh, join our Discord server and uh, make the request. Uh, basically, it's, a, uh, it's, it's like a voting system, right? Uh, if many people request the same thing, it's most likely coming to Aquatic. Uh, not guaranteed, but most likely. Okay. Uh, maybe Hansa has, to, has someone to say? Well, uh, just to say a few examples of what directions Aquatic could take. Uh, because uh, yeah, during the development I had so many ideas like what to do and uh, actually there's a reason we went for this uh, 2D effects in the first release and that is that water is such a broad topic to cover that we didn't want to try to tackle everything at once uh, you know you've got so many types of water so many ways water can move so many ways you can work with it you've got 2D meshes 3D meshes procedural animations you've got baked animations uh, so yeah, we went with one topic for this release and we are still gathering data for the next one. I can imagine several uh, ideas, like one of them would be using uh, particle systems to create some water effects. Another one would be to uh, provide with pre-baked simulations. Another one would be geometry nodes uh, and some procedural effects like procedural rivers. It all depends like on, on the feedback we will get. Maybe we will add more to the effects. It depends really what what you guys will ask for. Yeah, awesome. Uh, 
So there is a lot of uh, thanks to you for the answers and the next question is would it be possible to get the animated planes into Unreal Engine? Uh, that's a question that uh, is popping up for all of our add-ons actually. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure in the case of Aquatic if it's possible. Uh, I'm not an artist myself so I will again need to leave this to you alone. <laughs> well, I suppose it should be possible to be honest. Uh, I do not use uh, Unreal as often to like, be sure about this, but from what I know, it should be pretty simple to do. Uh, I guess you uh, exporting the planes, that's like out of question, that, that, that will work no matter what. And uh, I suppose that Unreal has some slot that would uh, enable you to input an animation sequence instead of uh, a single image. I would be very surprised if this uh, couldn't be done. But um, we can actually uh, add this to F FAQ and uh, confirm this. Maybe if there, if this question is repeated often enough, uh, we can make even a tutorial on on this topic. Sure, I am think think making a note, taking a note. Uh, so exporting to Unreal and Unity, I guess at the same time. Like I don't, I don't use Unreal. I wanted to export to Unity myself. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, like what you would need to do is just locate uh, the folder where the animation sequences are, which is in your Blender installation folder, which is probably something like C users app that are roaming. <laughs> you know, the, the place where all, all your add-ons are stored. And there will be aquatic add-on and you will find the folder for sequences. And each folder is a uh, one effect. So you would just copy this uh, folder with the effect to Unreal to the image slot, and I think it should work. Yeah. Alright, awesome. So that's uh, all the questions answered. If you have any more, just please ask. And in the meanwhile, we can go for the rest of the animations that you have prepared. So this one is uh, from Karel. Uh, this is an old scene, like we reused something again. <laughs> uh, why not, right? And uh, basically the scene uh, originally, it was the whole fountain section was just a reception, there was a table, a reception, and we replaced that with, uh, with the water effect. Uh, and it's looking cool, we added even the animated people in 3D, which make uh, the scene more alive. And that's uh, from my point of view, that's a good combination with Posane and the animated uh, trees and stuff. Uh, Aquatic can make the scene feel so much uh, more alive than before. Like everybody was using, you know, birds and stuff like that to cheat, <laughs> to cheat the system uh, a little. But now you can really make the scene alive with these animated uh, effects and textures. Yeah, I think we have one, maybe two more animations we've made. Yeah, this is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is a new scene, no, I'm kidding, we reused this as, as well. Uh, this is uh, from Václav, our newest uh, artist. Yeah. That's right. And he made this awesome scene and he used a uh, few assets as you can see. Actually this one, I fixed it myself, I'm so proud of myself until this day. Uh, I actually did something in Blender. <laughs> yeah, Mike is marketing manager but he still, he, he knows his way around Blender which is super cool. <laughs> So I yeah, helped, I helped uh, to do <laughs> something, <laughs> not just uh, marketing uh, materials and stuff. Uh, and based on the scene, actually, based on the scene, we edited the effect that you can see uh, in the foreground. Uh, what's the effect called? Uh, I think the, the, this, uh, these are two effects mixed. Uh, one is the actual stream and the other, other one are the drops. Let's see. So it is the downward. And the uh, spray singular. Yeah, so the downward effect uh, was more. Uh, you can we can say the the stream was stronger, so it uh, was. How do you call it? It was uh, not so round. It uh, fell down a little bit later, and when you uh, saw the scene in progress, you know we changed the effect, so it's it drops down, uh, like, uh, like real water would. Yeah, the water is really tricky to work with. Like, uh, you can you can always tell when something is off, but it's hard to tell why is it off. And uh, it, it took a lot of time to get things uh, 
get things right, especially the effect on the lovely fountain in the back, as I mentioned at the start of the stream. To get this movement of up and down uh, to realistic uh, was really hard work. Yeah, you can see the details in, uh, in the scene, like in the, in the background, the other shops. I thought all of that, the details make the scene more feel like it's real. Um, with the combination of the moving trees and the moving water, the animated stuff, it just feels it's real. Okay, let's uh, maybe move to the next one. Yeah, I think we've seen most of the animations. I've got, uh, I want to show this image again because it's very nice. This was also made by uh, our youngest uh, uh, artist in the office, uh, Laszlo. And I especially like this one because it was actually the first time we've tried uh, some artificial light uh, with the water effect because up until now, uh, up, or up until this point, we've actually only used daylight scenes. And I've asked a lot of stuff to try a night scene. And this was what came out of it super fast, like no, no special editing needed. It just looked right the first time. So I was really happy to see this. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, we don't have animation of this one. Uh, maybe we will edit at some point in the future. You can see that there is a car which could also move. It's a traffic car. And uh, the trees could also like breeze in the wind. <laughs> yeah, it, that's, that's so cool. Like, uh, if you have all three of the, uh, the add ons, you can just make the scene like totally uh, alive. You can move the vehicles, you can animate the trees, you can move the water. We are just missing the people. And animated uh, grass, which is a hot topic. <laughs> yeah, because we've been asking uh, for animated grass for some time. Yeah, we we know about it. <laughs> we think about it. Uh, there is actually like this uh, guideline that I wrote uh, on our Discord server, how you can do it by yourself. So, if if you want to have animated grass, you can look it up on our Discord server. It is in help desk in one of the threads. I think if you look up yeah. grass animation, you will definitely find it. Yeah, actually, on this one, guys, you can uh, use the top uh, right part of uh, there's a search button, and you can just type uh, and anything you want in there, like like Johan said, just uh, the grass animation, and it will it will show you all the mentions of the keywords that you entered, and that's how you can find it very easily. Yeah, let's play one more video. This one was fun to do. It was like. <laughs> A relaxing thing for me to do like uh, these are I always see these product scenes where uh, things get built uh, and you know each object each screw of, of some mechanical object gets uh, layered at the same time so I did this with the fountain it was just a quick thing to show like the, the point of it uh, these are the modular effects like um, uh, I, I like to call them Legos some some guys in the team like to call them uh, kish, kid, 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 kid bash, yeah, kid bashing kid, kid bashing kid. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is, like, you got this uh, one piece that you use to create more complex pieces from. I have to notice an error in the animation just now. I have seen it like a hundred times before, and I just noticed that one of the circle splash effects disappears. <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. I think it dives it's under two, water. It's two, actually. It maybe dives, yeah. But I'm sure you have not noticed, or maybe you did. But did you notice that the water actually fills up? Yeah, I did. As the animation I goes, it. I love it. I just wonder how you did it so cleanly, <laughs> and I, it's, I adore it. Here's the. That's one is actually EV because it, it works well for both cycles and EV. For EV, as with. Uh, it's similar to glass materials, you have to know how to set up the scene. So it's good to have like screen space refractions on, you have to have ambient occlusion on uh, to for this to work properly or to have decent realistic results. So do we have any more questions? Let's let's wait, uh, there's some more questions and maybe we can show something funny like this, yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is uh, from our testing, uh, we are testing Aquatic uh, and Johan made this real quick and I actually, <laughs> I, I loved it, so I, I went into the blend file, I edited it a little and I edited this Xicht, which is a uh, face in Czech 
I added that to Discord as a smiley face, uh, which is slightly different than, than this because it didn't work as well as intended. But uh, yeah, I, <laughs> we have a, a smiley from this on our Discord now. Yeah. These are like the effects uh, from from Aquatic, and you can see this one uh, uh, is uh, it's on a curve, and I guess this could be used for a river or something if, if you would ever need. So there is a question from Charles and he says can I map, map the effects on my own geometry like blood pumping through plastic pipes and so so that goes back to remapping the effects uh, which I guess we can show off. Yeah sure. Okay, let me just switch to Blender. I'll create a new scene. Uh, it's actually quite easy to uh, use the effects on your own meshes like uh, if you would want it to be as you said, on, on some plastic pipes, so yeah, if, if I would create blood pumping through plastic pipes, a uh, pipe here, uh, yeah, I, I, will, I will do a quick thing, I, I don't want to get too detailed. So I would spawn again one of the effects and uh, would affect the material is spawned as well. So what you could do is uh, actually just assign it to. Here, but there is one catch, <laughs> and that is uh, the aquatic uh, assets can be uh, masked, which means you can paint vertex color uh, on the mesh to hide some parts of it. So I'll show it here in the, in this effect. Yeah, so this is the effect. Like you actually paint some vertices black and some of them white. Yeah, this is how it looks. And the black one is the invisible part, the white is visible part. Now, uh, by default, this uh, vertex color, take your mask, is not on the object that you need, so you would have to create it. And you can either create it manually, see, I've added it and it's there, or you can use the paint up mask and it will automatically create it for you. And yeah, this one is already mapped, so I will just delete the start and the end, which you don't need. Yeah, and it's already running, but the UVs are a little bit too stretched, so I will just uh, go to the uh, go to the UV editing and uh, upscale them slightly, so it doesn't move too fast, it doesn't stretch too much. And if you would want blot. <laughs> you can just uh, change the color here, which uh, you need to make the material editable to do so. Because again, they are linked. There we go. And there we go. It's blood. It was quick. So just uh, spawn in the effect, copy the material, or edit, assign it to the object, uh, add the mask and the vertex colors, and change the color to red. And there we go. You have blood. And you can have <laughs> some splashing button. <laughs> Let's add it. Let's add it here. I hope this doesn't break. <laughs> yeah. And as you can see, it's playing in the viewport. Yeah. Two or three effects now in the scene, and it's smooth. It's playing. <laughs> how many FPS? 24, 25, someone, or someone, or some time, or the higher FPS. I wonder if uh, we can spawn more and test it out. <laughs> Whether we can run. And if I'm not mistaken, there is not a strong GPU on this one, right? On this computer. Yeah, it's pretty average. I think uh, what, what I have here is uh, GeForce 280. Oh, you've yeah. changed already? Yeah, yeah. I see. Uh, how many is that? Yeah, it's still running nicely. Unless you move it. <laughs> Unless you move it. Still what? Like it's still 25 FPS and you have I don't know how many effects in the scene. Um, well you can look at the statistics to know for sure. 150. Oh jeez, <laughs> that's a lot of effects. It, this looks like one of these uh, renders you see on Instagram, like this uh, abstract stuff renders. <laughs> so yeah, maybe this could be an NFT or something. <laughs> So uh, yeah, uh, Charles, thanks for your question. Hopefully uh, this uh, helped, this uh, answered your question. Yeah, hopefully it did. 
I wonder if we have uh, anything else to show from the uh, prepared materials. Uh, maybe the features of aquatic. We just switch to desktop again. Yeah, this one I've mentioned uh, a few moments ago. That's uh, masking the effect, which uh, which is very useful when you don't want the sharp edges on the effect. When you want to blend it to the surrounding, for example, if you have a splash effect, you want it to blend into the ground to disappear. Uh, this can help you with that. Uh, yeah, I guess it's going to be used uh, also if you have a waterfall, for example, and there's a rock sticking out of the middle, you can just make a hole in the effect, right? Like, yeah, yeah you were doing that. Yeah, little. yeah, that, that would make sense. I mean, in reality, uh, the water would go left and right, which here it doesn't. You could map that, it would take some extra work, but yeah, you could do that. Awesome. So that's a cool feature, the painting of, uh, of a mask. Yeah, this one we already talked about, like, um, you can see the timeline, it's 30 frames and it repeats infinitely. Uh, yeah, it's a huge time saver. It loops very perfectly. Uh, if you have any questions, guys, um, we are uh, in the last 10, of, 10 minutes of the stream, so feel free to ask. It's, uh, we are going to end soon, so it's your last chance. <laughs> <laughs> and this, uh, these are the water, multi real materials. Uh, which are added uh, from the alt add-on, and we just added uh, like a spawn material button that uh, adds them automatically to the scene. It's such a tongue twister to say material materials. <laughs> yeah. I, I had to say it like ten times before I said it right on the video. <laughs> so as you can see, there are multiple uh, types of, of water. And there's lake ocean, frosted uh, shoreline, which we talked about already, and. That's all I guess, I'm not sure. Yeah. I can show it here as well. Yeah. Have more time to look at them. <laughs> swimming pool, I forgot the most. Swimming pool, a pond. Yeah. yeah. And as always, all the materials can be edited. So I already received a question like, can we get more toxic, wa toxic water, like greenish, you know? <laughs> you just spawn the uh, usual water and then you change the color in the shader editor and you have yeah. your green water. The red water, if you are into blood, like Charles is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no, Charles has been known as a the blood guy. <laughs> uh, so as usual, yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, we are all just kidding. Yeah. Uh, so you can uh, change the effects and the colors and the shaders as uh, you can with all of the built-in angle sets. Yeah. Yeah. So now the scene froze because I spawned it while animating. <laughs> Which is a newbie mistake. Uh, what I wanted to show is uh, this button right here. Some of you may not notice it, but yeah, some of uh, materials have limitations, so be sure to check this out. Like this object needs a volume for this for this material to work correctly. So if you spawn it on the plane, uh, it will it will act weird. Like when when there's uh, some sun refractions, it will not behave correctly and it will downgrade your realism, which otherwise would be you know, very good. Yeah. So always spawn on the cube. Let's, let's, let's put it in <laughs> like that. And uh, yeah, the water shoreline effect. We got a question early. There's actually the button, uh, and it says the same thing that I said. Like, it's a complex uh, material that uh, it, it's best to learn how how that it works uh, from the um, from B C. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if there are no more questions, uh, we can wait a couple of more minutes if there is something. And in the meanwhile, we can show off the uh, last uh, of the material that we prepared. This is a GIF uh, of uh, Johan preparing the uh, waterfall scene. I actually love, the, love this GIF, I even included it on the product page. It just shows how quickly you work with Aquatic. Uh, and it, how quickly it renders in uh, real time as well. So you can see him uh, adding the effects one by one. He's choosing, 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 and he chose. <laughs> and he's adding them, and they are instantly rendered uh, in the rendered preview uh, up top there. So that's that's pretty cool that you can like review or preview uh, the effect real time. You don't have to wait 
for the simulation, the simulate and the finish and then you to bake it and stuff, you just can instantly see it in the viewport. Yeah, to save you benefits. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, so that's the waterfall scene. I'm not sure if you have anything else. Uh, I guess not, right, Johan? Yeah, I think we've covered everything. We hopefully answered all your questions. Uh, if you think of any questions later, uh, you can always contact us on Discord. We uh, try to be active there uh, all the time. It's m it's a little bit slower at the weekend because yeah, we do have lives. So if you have a question over weekend, you may have to wait until Monday to to be answered. But otherwise, we check it every day. We we see your uh, creations. Yeah. We, we like them. It motivates us. So uh, yeah, keep posting those. And yeah, if you have any question. You can always uh, contact us on Discord. Yeah, and following it up, if you are posting on social media, you, you might want to uh, tag us or you know use the hashtag Polygonic so we can uh, see the renders, their work on the social media, like Instagram, for example, and we can actually like, re repost it or you know see it uh, being published, uh, which motivate motivates us uh, or me even more. <laughs> Alright, so thanks uh, for all the, all the questions and for your time being here and hopefully we will see each other on the next stream which uh, has not a uh, date set but we will work on that after we finish here. Alright, All right. bye. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>